Namaste everyone and welcome. Thank you very much for joining me for this uh, evening portion of Anchor to Light Meditation. I know that uh, some of you have asked that uh, we go a little more in depth on releasing a lot of this old emotional stuff. So before we do our meditation, just um, let's ask for a blessing, shall we? To the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Divine Mother, to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers, we humbly ask for your blessings. Personally, to my teacher, Master Tohokusui Mahagu Jimailing, we humbly invoke for divine light, love, guidance, help, healing, and divine protection. We thank you. In full faith, so be it. All right, so let's start off with uh, what we covered this morning. And that was a lot of people don't realize that in their minds, their hearts, they want to be successful. But in reality, in order to really be successful, you have to let go of the old belief systems. And it's interesting that, you know, now that I'm working, have the privilege of working with Tony Robbins in a lot of his events, actually almost all his events, uh, especially this weekend, it's just amazing. We're going to have, um, I think, at least 12,000 connections. So, and if you look at the screen, each of them have like minimum two, three people. So you easily, almost 50,000 people are, are attending. And on Sunday, we're going to be doing meditation twin hearts with everyone. So you can imagine how much energy generated. You know, being in a room with 20, 30,000 people meditating at the same time. So anyway, one of the things that uh, it reminded me of was a story by uh, someone I met here. And basically, Tony asked him, you know, because this, this person, he's a therapist, right? He, he does body work and therapist. And so Tony asked him, so what is your dream clinic like? What does your clinic look like? If you have, can have anything you want, what is your dream clinic like? And this guy didn't really think about it. He says, well, you know, I couldn't afford it. That's the first thing that came out of his mouth. And uh, the reason I noticed is because he was telling me the story. And Tony looked at me and goes, I did not ask you what your limiting beliefs are. I asked you what your dream clinic is. And he just kind of pattern drop, shock, psychic slap, whatever you want to call it. And he just kind of shook him and says, oh, oh, okay, okay. You see, of course, he's his life turned around rapidly after that, just took off like a rocket, okay? Because he focused on his uh, goals and aspirations and got rid of a lot of limiting beliefs. But here's my point. Why was it the first thing that came out of his mouth? A lot of you have biblical background, you know, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, right? You heard that saying before. So in other words, if that person is consumed with that, with those ideas and thoughts, even if uh, something great, I mean, something's given to you, okay, what would your dream clinic like? What would be your dream house like? What would be your dream future be like? What would be your dream husband, wife, whatever it be like? Imagine, you say dream, that means sky's the ceiling. That was his question. I remember he was telling me, Tony's question was, what is your dream clinic like? He didn't say, what is a clinic you can afford? What would you like? He said, dream clinic. It's like somebody asked you, what would your dream income be? Dream means, poof, pull it out of nowhere. Anything you like. And yet he goes, first thing came out of his mouth is, oh, couldn't afford it. Or I think it was something like, I couldn't afford it, but oh, it might be too much. It's just like saying, if you can have anything in the universe, what would you like? I don't know. I don't think I can have it. You see how ridiculous that is? But that illustrates what happens in most people's minds. The limiting thought forms ideas, feelings that we've generated in the past, either through negative experiences or people have told us or reaching, uh, watching TV, reading newspaper or somebody who's supposed to be a friend who is uh, not doing well and, and loves company, so they yank you down, whatever it is. Our response to those events generate thoughts and emotions. So this sit in your aura and in your chakras. If you don't get rid of them, you can have somebody giving you a dream job, a dream opportunity, a dream partner, husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. You screw it up. You know why? Because even though it's something in front of you and it could be yours to partake, the old keeps pulling us back. That's why I've, I've met some people, they kept complaining about the, their first ex-husband or ex-wife, and they go to two or three of them. And then the first thing I asked them, I didn't tell them, because you know you have to be practicing loving kindness. I go, aren't you the common denominator? <laughs> right? You keep changing it, but you're the one that's 
the same. So if it didn't work out, um, how are you sure it's them, not you? <laughs> of course, I won't say that. And that's the important part to remember because I remember in one of the events with Tony Robbins, he was saying that oftentimes when a person, let's say, have intimate issues, intimacy issues, that means there's a limiting belief in there. They want to be happy. Once they reach a certain level of connection, intimacy with someone, it triggers that old thought form. He didn't say thought form. He has a different his old pattern, he calls it. But it's essentially a thought form saying, no, it triggers, wakes it up, and then it screws around with your thoughts in your mind and your emotions. And so you do, do and say stupid things. <laughs> Sounds familiar? It's the same thing as, hey, I want to be successful. I want to make a kajillion dollars. And you say, I wish this, I wish that. And you here you are, even in class, they say, yeah, you know, so be it, and blah, blah, blah. And you see all these, like, bunch of people just jumping up and down. They say, okay, let's see. Then when nobody's watching, when you're talking to them in private, guess what? Instead of saying, yeah, you know, I had this challenge before. I finally figured a way. I know that it's in my hands. I can do it. Instead of saying, they go, yeah, but you know, I love it that they said that they gave that testimony in class, but it only happens to some people. Will never happen to me. I'm going. <sighs> you get my point? Many years ago, same thing. I had an aunt. Well, she's still my aunt. <laughs> uh, okay, just in case some of you are listening with an accent, aunt is not like little, you know, aunt, auntie. There you go. <laughs> some people say, how come you can't say it right? An auntie, you know, mother, sister. And I remember we were um, having dinner with the whole family. This is like, geez, 30 years ago. And um, just conversation, talk about income and money and all that stuff. And somebody said something to the fact that, yeah, I like to make a certain amount of money. You know, it's more than what most people make, but it's not unreachable. Okay. And then <laughs> before anybody could say anything, first thing that blurred out of her mouth is, I don't even bother. I'll never get those. I'm thinking... It's a lively conversation. You could just say, oh, that'd be nice. Or something, right? No, 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 no. Like that. I'm going, no wonder. People with their thoughts and emotions and their emotions create their own misery. People with thoughts and emotions create their own fortune. Get the idea? So I'm sharing this with you because before we do this healing, it's something like this. We flush out all the crap out of your aura and your chakras. But if you did not have an active understanding of what's going on, then you might subconsciously recreate that pattern. But if we disintegrate all these thoughts and emotions out of your aura and your chakras already, and you are aware of not creating those thoughts again, and if even the slightest hint of that comes up, you stop yourself, then you stop yourself from creating that bowling chain that keeps pulling you back. Make sense? It's a combination of two. Some people it's just, just think it's just one. Yeah, just practice positive thinking. Be aware. Cancel that negative thought. That's good and nice. At least there's awareness and you bring forward. But it does not disintegrate what's in the past. And some people say, no, I'll just do healing. You'll take care of everything. I'll just meditate. I'll take care of everything. That might flush the old stuff out. But if you don't have an understanding that you created that crap in the first place, you'll recreate it again. So the secret is to do both. Now, personally, I feel very, very blessed because learning from Grandmaster Tohok Sui, he is literally the epitome of a pragmatic spiritual person. You know, very, very spiritual, expansion of consciousness, all these deep, high spiritual teachings. And he's a super successful businessman. He was already a multi, 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 multi millionaire before he started traveling the world and teaching. And I remember talking to him, he says, yeah, so I don't have to worry about who pays my bills. Who's feeding my family? I can focus 100% on spe spreading spiritual teachings. And that shocked the heck out of me because I thought a yogi that's floating is only wearing a G-string, you know? <laughs> and the businessman or, or businesswoman is super rich but has no inner peace that can never be spiritual. I didn't, real didn't realize the two can be together. And the secret is one simple word. Understanding. Because when you understand, understanding is Bina in the tree of life. That's your Ajna Chakra. This is the synthesizing energy center. When this chakra is active and functioning properly, this allows you to synthesize information, the higher worlds, the lower worlds, in between everything else. What's going on in your life? Synthesize it so you can direct your life. 
That's the Ajna Chakra. Again, I know some of you do. It's not the third eye. Probably 99.9% .9 of you, you go to the bookstore, you open up a book, they'll tell you this is the third eye. That's not the third eye. The real third eye is up here. That's why if you look at images of um, paintings of uh, saints that, you know, have an eye, you never see it here. It's always up here. Okay? Anyway, that's a lesson for another time. If you, if you want to know more about it, grab a hold of, um, let's see, Omani Padmi Home. That's a book by my teacher. And The Spiritual Essence of Man, the 11, no, The Inverted Tree of Life, The Chakras and the Inverted Tree of Life. Anyway, it's in the bookstore. Just go to masterco.org. It's all in there. Right? Now, so back to what we're talking about. Now that you have hopefully a better understanding <clears throat> that your thoughts and emotions have a big, big effect on your life in the past and the future. We're going to do an intense meditation, bring the spiritual energy down, disintegrate a lot of negative thoughts, negative emotions from the past. And then afterwards, I'll have you picture what you want for the future and we'll charge it up with energy. Okay? Now, let's talk, break it down a little bit. So, why is it important? What is the importance of doing the meditation? Doing the meditation does two things. First one I already told you. For the cleansing effect. Okay? Why be under a faucet when you can be under a waterfall? Make sense? <clears throat> the second part is this. When that spiritual energy is penetrating from above through your crown into your entire body, it's not just energy. It's information with data. With information. In other words, that's energy coming from your soul, from your higher soul, to be more specific. So in other words, as that pipeline gets bigger, the information comes in, goes into your aura and your chakras, so the energy of the higher soul will control the body, the emotions, and the thoughts. So when you become more successful, you notice I watch my words carefully, not if, when you become more successful, it is controlled by your higher soul. Because there are people who are financially success, uh, successful, but they do it through cheating, they do it through swindling people, and so on and so on. That's not the way to be successful because when you become prosperous that way, so much negative karma is generated, it comes back to them 10, 100 times more. Make sense? So the way we want to do it is we meditate, allow the divine energy to come down to cleanse simultaneously as that energy is coming in. It is displacing the old energy with higher frequency information coming from the higher soul. It's just like you have a cup of old coffee, right? You dump the old coffee first and fill it with new coffee. Something like that. All right. Now, the question is, why are we doing this visualizing bit? The ones who took Kri Shakti, you know, there are many ways to create very powerful thought forms, right? Now, the reason we're using visualization is twofold. Number one, the other more advanced techniques I cannot share publicly. The second reason is, according to science, when a person can visualize and picture something so well and so real, your brain cannot distinguish between what is imagined and what is actually physically real. And when that happens, you come up with one powerful word. Write it down. This is the secret of success, among other things, as far as one word is concerned. Certainty. What is it? Certainty. When you have absolute, absolute certainty on something, there's no room for doubt. Get the idea? When you're so certain about something, it is done. You move forward, right? It's just like the example my teacher used many years ago. He says, <clears throat> if your father is a, is a billionaire right now, right this moment, Son, I mean, let's do it again. If you suddenly realize your father is a billionaire, or mother, your parents are billionaires, you just found out right now, would the way you think and act change? So we go, no, I'll still be humble. I'll still won't spend it. Yeah, right. Full. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> you're full of it. <laughs> That's pure nonsense. Anyone, their perception will change. Right? It's just like if somebody told you, by the way, you're an heir, heir, H-E-I-R. You're an heir to a kingdom in somewhere. You're now worth billions. Would your perception of life change? 
with the things that you do from now on change? Absolutely. Because you now have certainty. I have this. I have this backup. Make sense? If you have absolute certainty that your thoughts and words can create or destroy your life, would you be be more aware and be more careful what comes out of your mouth, your mind, your feelings, and your actions? Absolutely. So that's why that certainty is extremely important. A lot of people I've not talked to, they can recite you tons of spiritual teachings, but their life is a big fat mess because it's all theoretical and just intellectual understanding. There is no certainty enough for them to apply it in their life. True? Not true. That's why one last lesson and we'll do our meditation. This is part of our Hatik Yoga, Kriya Shakti, a lot of message choice teachings. By the way, before I tell you this uh, very simple acronym, you might notice I keep referring to my teacher. One of my goals in doing this Anchor Light Meditation, all these teachings that I'm sharing online, is not for me to get famous. <laughs> it's not for me. It's to basically open the door so you can see and understand the depth of my teacher's teachings. So wherever you are in the world, there's a pranic healing uh center or organization if you just look around you'll find it pranic p-r-a-n-i-c pranic you know panic with an r so the way the, the way i help people remember it says you know when you're panicking put an r from panic you use pranic you get rid of that stress i know it's cheesy but it helps me all right anyway yes healing classes spiritual classes prosperity classes all based on spiritual teachings that are tried and tested, okay? Anyway, so one of the things that Grand Master Chua taught, uh, taught, me as, taught us many years ago is whenever you have certain spiritual teachings, certain information, you are P-M. Just write it down. You are P. M. It's just like uh, if you're in the airline industry or in NATO, they, they call it uh, Uniform, Romeo, Papa, Mike. But that's not what it's for. <laughs> URPM means whatever is spiritual teaching, whatever information you have, step one, you is to understand it. Without understanding, you cannot have knowledge. Knowledge is understanding. It's basically the information has already been synthesized. became practical information. That's called knowledge. So you start with understanding. That's why we're taking so much time explaining everything to you. Otherwise, we just say, okay, close your eyes, tongue on your palate, let's do it. I know some of you, that'll be fine. Some of you probably tired of me yakking. Well, go somewhere else. Here's the point. Once you understand something, that's the start of creating certainty in your life on that subject. Because once you understand it, then you start to understand it deeper and deeper. At some point, you come up with a certain conclusion that becomes your knowledge. Then from there, as you understand it, you'll have more certainty to practice it. Because you go, it makes sense. I'm not just blindly following. I know some people do that. I don't know about you, but the way I was brought up is don't take things blindly. That's why one of the reasons why I'm still around. When I first took Pranic Killing, I'm, remember, I'm an engineer by trade in the Southern Baptist. I walk into a class, people doing this in the air. I'm like, what the heck is this? But first thing came out of Massachusetts mouth, he says, okay, you're not obligated to believe everything that's taught here. You're supposed to understand it, analyze it, and make your own conclusion. The teacher's like a supermarket. We go, what? The teacher's like a supermarket. When you walk in, you don't take everything off the shelf. You just take home what you need. I say, I can handle that. That's why I'm still around. Otherwise, I would have quit. I was probably his most skeptical student. Now, as you understand it, it gives you the reason, the compelling reason to practice. And when you're feeling like a lazy ass, <laughs> the understanding will say, come on, you have to practice because this has this purpose. The understanding gives you the why. Make sense? So, understanding, I forgot one letter, (laughs) R is to remember it. Understand, remember, 
practice. And eventually, M is what? To master it. Now, let me talk about R very quickly because I kind of jumped a little bit. Once you understand something, all of us have studied so much. There's information under uh, overload, isn't it? So the key is once you understand it, you have to remember what you learned and that pushes you to practice. So remember and practice are actually interconnected. It's just like I've met people says uh, many years ago, you know, about tithing, giving money to charity. I remember I was on the phone with a student or pers prospective student. And she said, I was telling her about um, the importance of tithing, giving money to charity, generate good karma. Okay. And I said, yeah, you know, one of the things that's taught in Pranaking or Hatha Yoga, uh, Kriya Shakti is tithing. It's very, very important to give money to charity to create space within you to be able to receive. So I just said a few things. You know what she said? She goes, oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. I did it once and it worked. I was looking at the phone and go, is she out of her mind or did I miss something? She's so excited. Yeah, it worked. If he just did it, I started doubting my own sanity. She said with such enthusiasm, yeah, it worked. And I did it once. I'm going, what's wrong with this person? If something works and it works great, why won't you keep doing it again? She did not have certainty. Getting it? So once you understand something, you have to remember it and remember to practice it. Now the remember part, remember part is like this. Teachings don't do anything if you don't remember them. <laughs> That's part one. Part two, to remember them at the appropriate time. I'll give you a very simple example, then we'll get into meditation. One of the things that we learned, a lot of you learned when you took the Achieving Oneness with me, Achieving Oneness class, remember, either online or physically, and also in our Hatha Yoga, we try to encourage you to watch your words. Instead of saying, I'm so tired, you say, my body is tired. I know some of you might remember that. You've never heard me say, oh, I'm tired, right? I say, my body's tired. Or instead of saying, I'm so angry, I'm so pissed off. No, I just say, hey, this situation is really upsetting. In other words, I do my very best because that's the way I was taught. Do not own the negative energy. Don't say, um, you, say you hear these people out. I want to slap these people. No, loving kindness. This, I'm so confused. Well, no wonder you're confused. It is the mind that is confused, not the soul. I, the soul, don't get hungry. I, the soul, don't get confused. I, the soul, don't get tired. It is the body that gets tired. The body gets hungry. It's the mind that gets confused. You say, yeah, but you know, you talk like that. Uh, exactly the point. Here's the way my teacher explained it. He said, when things are doing well and there's no crisis, you can't even remember who you are and talk and act appropriately to show who you remember you are. Are you telling me that when there's a crisis, suddenly you remember, oh, this anger is not me? Yeah, right. By then you're swimming in it frontwards and backwards. Yeah, but people think we, we're weird. I'd rather be weird and have a good life than be normal in the life that's going down the toilet. You really want to be like everybody else? Every little thing that happens, ah! That's one of the reasons why, little plug here, next Friday is the full moon meditation. And as you know, every full moon we have a lecture. The lecture for next week is the archer, you know, archer, and the Zen master. How to calm the inner storm. I hope you join us. I thought it's like a nice title, right? Archer. Yeah. The archer and the Zen master. The secrets of calming the inner storm. Because if you look at the general population, whether they have money, they don't have money, whether life is good, not good, you cut across, the majority don't have inner peace. The inner peace oftentimes is either the bottle, drugs, or what? Some stupid vice. Because the soul partially lost control. So if you're going to call me weird by saying, oh, how come you don't say I'm tired? You say my body's tired. You're weird. Call me weird all day long. I'm perfectly fine. 
I, the soul, am control the body, the emotions, the thoughts, rather than I talk like normal and the life is going down the toilet. Ask me if I care. Do you get my point? So the key is to understand the teachings deep enough that you will remember at the right time. And as you remember it, you constantly practice it to eventually master it. Now, the word is eventually because there are many facets in our life that we need to learn and practice, right? And so mastery is not very simple. But here's the best news of all. On the way to that mastery, you would see your life improving already. What else do you want? Let's meditate. So here's the game plan. I hope you have your salt water already. By the way, for some of you who are getting weirded out, actually, I don't care. <laughs> if <laughs> When you put your feet in salt water, as you're listening to the lecture, you'll notice certain old thought forms are being disintegrated. Right? When you have new knowledge and realize that your old knowledge has to be updated, that's a kind way of saying it was wrong, <laughs> those old thought forms are shed from your aura. So if your feet are in salt water, those are also already getting disintegrated. So don't think you're wasting your time listening, because if you are, then again, you know my word, you know my, my saying that go somewhere else. I'm not here to babysit. The ones who want to listen, listen. The one you can't handle it, go somewhere else. But the ones who want to listen, I promise you one thing. I'll do my very best of what I'm allowed to share online, of what my teacher taught me, and will just unload it on you. Because my goal is all the information my teacher gave me, what the heck am I going to do with it if I don't share it with you guys, right? So if you're open to it, just keep an open mind. I'm not saying swallow everything, analyze, take notes and practice it. Most of you are probably will never meet. But at least I know if my teacher's teaching is touching your soul, I'm a happy dude. Okay, shall we? So here's the game plan. Before we start, I'm going to give you about 30 seconds. I want you to think of certain limiting beliefs in your mind right now, in your heart, in your life. Anywhere from finances to relationships to health, whatever limiting thoughts that you have right now. You can't do it or you don't know if it'll work, whatever. I want you to pick maybe two or three the most. I want you to think about it and then just give it a number in terms of intensity of how it affects you. Ten is worse, zero is none. Now, this is very important for two reasons. Number one. As you think about it and identify it, it comes out of your chakras. Okay, so we don't, we don't have to go cave hunting. <laughs> Make sense? As you think about it, oh yeah, you know, I have this or whatever. Just the fact you brought it up, it already partially comes out of the chakras, which is good. Then we can just pull it out. That's part one. Part two. As you think about it and give it an intensity number, we're trying to measure it. Because if you cannot measure it, you don't know if you've improved. So why don't you do that now? I'll give you 30 seconds. Okay? Think about it. By the way, the ones who do not have salt water, uh, for whatever reason, again, this is not as powerful as actually having your feet in physical salt water. The whole time you're going to do this, you're going to visualize your feet up to your, uh, visualize your feet up to your knees in salt water, like you're standing out in the ocean. I'm pointing here because literally outside my window over there is the ocean. Okay? So when I'm clean like this, I go, whoo, I can't miss. <laughs> All right, so I'll give you 30 seconds, go. Think of certain two, three things that you want to get rid of. Certain limiting beliefs, money, relationships, health, weight, education, whatever. Okay. Got it? Now, if you can't, for whatever reason, you go, ah, don't pressure me. Okay, 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 okay. Although I give you plenty of time since whatever, but here's the best news. After we're done with this, this is all recorded anyway. It's going to be on whatever platform you're watching it. It's staying there. How long? I don't know. It depends. Unless they kick me out for having too many videos. <laughs> okay? <clears throat> so it's going to stay there. You practice it now. Go all out. Then you just rewind it. Go to the process. It'll work just as well. 
We explained that to you before already. Even reruns, as you call it, or, or replays are just as powerful because the information is already in the quantum flux field. Ooh, that sounds so intelligent. In other words, the energy is already in that cloud, if you will. The energy is there, the information is there. So as you watch it and you practice it, you access that data again and that energy flow through you. Okay? Anyway, that's the best I can explain at this point. All right, ready? Put your hands on your heart. Put your attention in your crown. I am that. I am. I am not the body. I am not any of these emotions. I am not any of these thoughts. I'm not even the mind. The body, the emotions, the thoughts, the mind, these are just my instruments. These are not the I. I am the soul. I, the soul, exist independently of the body, the emotions, and the mind. I am that. The soul. The spiritual self. A spiritual being of divine intelligence, divine love, divine willpower. I am that. Now just be still. Allow your awareness to keep Hovering above your head, if it floats higher, just let it be. I am connected in one to my higher soul. I am connected in one to the divine spark within me. I am a child of God. I am one with God. I am one with all. There is only oneness. Just be still. Allow your awareness to hover way above your crown. Be still. We are one. Now imagine all of us are inside the big bright sun. As beings of light, open your hands in blessing. We're going to do the great invocation to allow ourselves to be an instrument, a gin ginormous instrument to bless the earth. Let's chant Om three times. Om. 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 From the point of light within the mind of God, let light swim forth into the minds of every person, every being. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love swim forth into the hearts of every person, every being. Let love descend to the entire earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let divine purpose guide the wills of every person, every being, the purpose which the Holy Masters know and serve. Let goodwill and the willingness to do good descend toward the entire earth. So be it. Just be still. Allow the love, intelligence, and power of God flow through us and bless the earth. Again, from the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of every person, every being. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of every person, every being. Let love descend on earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let divine purpose guide the wills of every person, every being, the purpose which the Holy Masters know and serve. Let good will and the willingness to do good descend toward the entire earth now. So be it. So be it. Just be still. If you're sensitive, you could feel energy flowing through you. Maybe your hand centers, your head centers throbbing. They're just basically opening to create an entryway for all the divine energy to flow through. Now we're going to intensify the energy flowing through you. I want you to just leave your attention way above your head. Just You don't have to visualize anything. Just put your attention above your head. A few inches, a few feet, doesn't really matter. A few meters, just leave your attention above your head and listen. 
From the point of light, we need might of God. Let light stream forth into the minds of every person, every being. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of every person, every being. Let love descend throughout the entire earth now. May God's messenger of love descend on earth now. So be it. From the center where the will of God is known, let divine purpose guide the wills of every person, every being, the purpose which the holy masters know and serve. Let good will and the willingness to do good descend throughout the entire earth now. So be it. Now just be still. We'll intensify the energy even more. Just be still. Nothing will be said, but mass amounts of energy will pour through you. Be receptive. From the center which you call the human race and all the different races in the world, let the plan of love and light work out and may permanently seal the door where any evil dwells. Let light, love, and power descend throughout the entire earth. Let light, love, and power restore the divine plan on earth now. So be it. Let's chant on three times together. Oh. Oh. Just be still, keep your hands where they are, don't move. The divine energy is entering your crown. It's pouring down to your crown, your forehead, your ajna, your back head chakras. It's pouring down to your throat, your front back heart, your front back soul plexus, front back spleen, front back liver, your navel, your ming ming, your sex chakra, and your basic. It's pouring down, down to your hips, your knees, down to your feet, and down to the salt water and into the earth. Just be receptive. Om. 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 Just be still. Keep your hands where they are. It's pouring out of your hands and your feet into the salt water. Just listen and let go. Just keep your hands where they are. Tongue on your palate. The divine energy is entering your crown chakra. Any limiting thought forms, ideas, emotions, energies in your crown chakras are now being disintegrated. Disintegrated, disintegrated by liquid divine energy. Dissolved, disintegrated, and continuously being flushed out to the nearest salt water. The liquid divine energy is entering your Ajna Chakra in between your eyebrows, going deep, deep into your Ajna Chakra all the way to the roots. Any negative thoughts and emotion, any limiting beliefs, ideas are disintegrated, extracted, and flushed down to the nearest salt water. Now, so be it. Just be still. It's continuing to cleanse your crown, your Ajna Chakra. The liquid divine energy is entering your throat chakras and your jaws. It's going deep, deep into your throat chakras, dissolving, disintegrating all thoughts and emotions and limiting beliefs. These are disintegrated completely, completely 
extracted, expelled it near salt water now. The liquid divine energy is pouring down, down, deep into your front solar plexus, which is below your sternum, in between your ribs, as well as behind you into your back solar plexus. The liquid divine energy is entering your back solar plexus and your front solar plexus deep, deep into the roots, and then entering your lower astral, or what you call lower emotional body. It's disintegrating, dissolving any negative emotions, fear, fear of failure, fear of success, low self-esteem, low self-worth. These energies are dissolved, disintegrated, fully extracted and flushed down to the near salt water and to you now. Just be receptive. Let it happen on its own. The liquid divine energy is pouring down, down to your basic chakra, down to the base of your spine in your coccyx. It's going deep into your basic chakra, dissolving, disintegrating anything that hinders you from being financially successful. Just be still. It's still working. Continue. Just be receptive, it's still working. The liquid divine energy is entering your basic chakra deeper, deeper. Any limiting beliefs about money, about prosperity, are now being dissolved, disintegrated, extracted, expelled in the nearest salt water. So be it. Just be receptive. The liquid divine energy is cleansing your crown, your ajna, your throat, front and back solar plexus, and your basic chakras. Just listen. You're now under a waterfall of brilliant divine energy. Your crown, your ajna, throat, front and back solar plexus, basic chakras are now being deeply cleansed. Oh Om. 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 This indicate all these negative energies now. Your crown chakra is being cleansed. Your ajna chakra is being cleansed. Your throat chakras are being cleansed. Your front back soul plexus chakras are cleansed. Basic chakra cleansed. Any limiting beliefs, thoughts, ideas, conscious or subconscious, are now being completely disintegrated. In the name of my teacher, Master Tokok Sui Mahagu Jimeling, by the power will of God, these negative thoughts are disintegrated, dissolved, permanently released into near salt water. So be it. Just be receptive. Let the energy continue working. It's cleansing. So be it. So be it. So be it. Just keep let it working. Keep letting keep letting it work. So be it. Just be receptive. Let it work on its own. Be still, Just let it work.
Just continue letting it work on your body. Just be receptive. All negative thoughts of energy disintegrate completely, release, so be it. All right. Open your hands in blessing. To further release the negative energy, we're going to chant OM, okay? Focus on your crown, your hands, and your feet. Om, Om, Om. Just let the energy keep flushing out of your system now. So be it. So be it. So be it. So it is. All right. Look at me. Put your hand like this. Say, cut and disconnect from all these negative energies. Just move your hand like that. Say, cut, disconnect. All right. Let's give thanks to the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers. We humbly ask for your blessings. Thank you for the blessings of love, light, guidance, help, healing, and protection. Thank you. In full faith, so be it. We thank you. All right. Open your eyes. I think you guys generate so much energy, huh? The ones that are uh, streaming on the other platforms <laughs> conked out. Only the one in Instagram is working. <laughs> so I had to kind of recalibrate in the middle of it. So rest assured, the ones who are in uh, Facebook, Instagram, no, Facebook, YouTube, and the two websites, panicking.com and mexico.org, will re-upload this <laughs> from the Instagram <laughs> up to that one. All right. So why don't you do a self-assessment? You gave it a number before. Of those limiting beliefs, whatever they were, 10 was worth, 0 is none. Where are you now? And if you feel lighter? So here's the plan. You're going to get up. Uh, not now. After we're done, you're going to get up. Do your physical exercises. You know, it doesn't have to be like full, <laughs> all out one, two hour workout. Just 10, 15 minutes of shaking, you know, gentle tapping, moving your joints. That helps squirt out a lot of negative energy out of your system. Okay. Again, I'm going to re-upload this because it kind of conked out on the, the regular one, only the Instagram. I'll take this, I'll put it up there so you can practice it again. Do the one this morning first. The one in the morning does a general cleansing of all the aura and the chakras. This one in the evening goes into the crown, ajna, throat, front, back, solar plexus, and basic. Okay? Uh, just a few announcements. Again, on Friday, it's a full moon meditation. We'll post it. You'll get the email on it. It's uh, The title again is The Archer and the Zen Master. How to calm the inner storm. All of us have it. Uh, if you don't have any inner storms, either you're already a full-blown enlightened saints, uh, or you're delusional. <laughs> as simple as that. All of us have it, right? To have it continuously, no inner storm, I, I congratulate you, or you just, uh, let's just say, <laughs> in denial, okay? So we'll co cover that, and we'll go into the, the steps of what it is, study what it is, and how to correct it. And then, uh, on top of that, this Sunday... When I'm at UPW, which is, well, what's today anyway? Today's Friday, right? I think it's Friday. Yeah, Friday. So on Sunday, I'll do my best to kind of plan it out. So we'll give you guys a warning when we're going to do the meditation. I cannot stream it from there. It's not, a, it's not on my event. But I want you to be able to take advantage of the group energy. So I'll, you know, send a text right away or something. I'll have somebody do it. So right on Facebook and Instagram, you'll see it. Go, okay, meditating starting, meditation starting in 10 minutes. So when that happens, you just basically, the way you do it is you sit down, be quiet, just affirm oneness. I'm not the body, not the emotion, not the thoughts. I'm the soul. I'm one with my higher soul. I'm connected to divine spark within me. I'm one with God. I'm one with all. The one we always do here. You guys heard it enough times. The I'm affirmation that's uh, formed by my teacher, Master Tuakok Sui. So when you say that, you just form the intention. We're all interconnected. And remember, certainty. When you have that certainty, it's as if you're in that room with me. By the way, it's virtual, so people are all over the place anyway, right? But energetically, we're linked as one. So we can do the meditation, take advantage of it, a mass amount of spiritual energy. Because the focus of that, like I always do, in all these events, I harness all that group energy and bless the earth with it. Okay? People think, oh, so I can have more inner peace. That's the byproduct of doing world service. Okay. What else? So that, and then Friday, full moon. And then uh, some of you who are still asking about it, it's still around. 
It's going to continue for a while. The deep emotional healing transformation. I know some of you knew, and I'll repeat this again because we're going to have several thousand people join us next week for our Anchor the Light meditation from UPW. It, basically, every time we have an event, more people join us for meditation. So I have to give this option again and all the other events. So just go to masterco.org. We also have the Feng Shui event happening there. The registration is there. So all the data is there. Okay. I think that's it. And I apologize for some of you watching at YouTube and, and uh, Facebook and all that that you conked out. Um, you guys just have way too much energy. All right. Before we end, I still have another five minutes. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to picture in your mind what you want. In other words, whatever it is that you got rid of, I want you to replace it with what you want. If it's because of a limiting beliefs about money, I want you to picture yourself being very prosperous and being happy with it. If it's um, having a better relationship because the past did not turn out so well, I want you to picture what your ideal relationship would be. Come on, you can do it. Remember, just no holds barred. You're dreaming about it. Remember when Tony Robbins asked that person, he says, I ask you what you dream cleaning it, not your limiting beliefs. Remember that? Same thing. What is your dream relationship? What is your dream uh, finances? What is your dream house? Dream uh, dream health? Whatever. Go. Come on, I'm not charging you for this extra boost. So just do it. Close your eyes, do it. <laughs> okay? Now imagine it, a brilliant golden light. Just beautiful. inside a glistening, super bright golden light. It's inside this big golden light. See it inside like a movie that's playing. Keep going. Keep picturing that image. You're happy. You're so grateful. You're really enjoying it. You say, yeah, this is what I want. Okay? Remember, certainty. In the energy world, you can picture anything you want. <laughs> Nobody's going to question <laughs> any of your ideas, any of your images. Go. All right. So just be receptive. You don't have to do anything. Just keep picturing that golden ball of light with what you like inside of it. Open your eyes. Just imagine grabbing that beautiful ball of golden light, pull it towards you, and put it inside your heart. Not like this, just pull it in through your crown, and it's inside you. And you say thank you. And we'll give thanks to the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, spiritual helpers. Personally, to my teacher, Master Talk Hoksui, Mahaguju Mailing, thank you. In full faith, so be it. Now, keep your eyes closed. Just be receptive. As your heart desires, may all these goals and wishes manifest in divine order. With God's blessing, Tatastu. So it is. Om. Amen. Amin. Tatastu, so it is. All right. Open your eyes. Okay. That's it. I uh, hope you had a good experience. Um, I know some of you are going to ask, what is that? Then what did you do? What you do? What you do? Anyway, it's a simple answer. 
We did the purification to remove a lot of negative thoughts and emotions, right? And you create a positive one that you want. You basically flood it with energy, and when you pull it inside of you, now it's going to work in the background. It's just like delete old program, install new program. I know that's oversimplifying. The ones who took Kree Shakti uh, with me and with uh, any of my colleagues, uh, you already know that's creating a super powerful thought form to work inside you. You go, hey, I didn't learn that in class. There are many things we didn't teach you in class. <laughs> but the question is, are you practicing what you learned? <laughs> Big difference. Anyway, because there's, there's thousands of you watching, uh, some the, I have to use a certain more advanced technique to kind of make sure all your thoughts are super energized. And if you're sensitive, and I'd like to hear your feedback, uh, if you felt something when that was being done. Usually when we do this, people feel like, yeah, I felt a sudden glow, I feel a warmth, I feel things got really thick and heavy in a good way, like it became more substantial. So that's that. All right, and uh, I'm not charging you for any of this. So all I want is for you guys to be happy and successful. You know why? Because when that happens, that is a testimony of the teachings of my teacher. And that's my goal. That's it. So we will see you, what's today, Friday? So we will see you Sunday. Well, not this way, but I'll tell you about the, um, the group meditation I'm doing with, the, with uh, UPW. And then at the same time, um, I will see you Monday. Monday I'm traveling, so Monday afternoon, we'll do it. Monday morning, I'll see how I can maneuver it because my flight's pretty early. I'll see how I can um, magically make it happen. We'll see. Namaste, everyone. You all have a wonderful, fantastic, amazing weekend. Thank you very much for allowing me to serve you. You guys take care. See you soon. Okay. Bye.